presence. God you said in Genesis 28 and 16, and when Jacob had awakened out of his sleep, he said, Surely, the Lord's in this place, and I know it not. Lord God, what a tragedy to have been in your presence, but yet not recognize you're there. Lord God, we go ahead and acknowledge and recognize you're here. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I'll be in the midst of them, Matthew 18 and 20. And I thank you for the promise of your presence. You said he shall call upon me, and I will answer him and be with him in trouble, and I will honor him and deliver him. Psalms 9 and 115. God, before you honored or before you delivered, you made the most awesome promise to those that call upon you in prayer. You said, I will be with you in trouble. In other words, God, you made the promise of your presence. You promised to be there. You promised to be with us. Hallelujah. We're never alone. You said, I will be with you. To Joshua and Joshua 1 and 5, and you said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Holy Ghost, I thank you. I'll never fail you nor forsake you. I'll be with you. Joshua 1 and 5. I thank you, God. You've never failed to be there. When those who call upon you, God, from the earnest of their heart, Lord, you show up and you show out. You're there. You're God. Hallelujah. You're a presence help in time of trouble. You're our refuge and a present relevant help in time of trouble. Psalms 46 and 1. And I praise you for your presence that is present in the mighty name of Jesus. Jehovah Shammah, that Hebrew name of God simply means the Lord is there. And God, I thank you. You're there. You're not only here, you're there. Whatever it is we're about to step into, whether it be hard, whether it be uh, difficult, Lord, you're already there. You went the force and I thank you that the promise Lord God of your presence gives us a hope tonight from God's word in Isaiah 40 hallelujah in verses 1 you said you'd make crooked places straight hallelujah you'd make rough places smooth hallelujah God I thank you Holy Spirit you said mountains would be made low and valleys would be exalted and we give you glory tonight for that I thank you that the hills still melt like wax at the presence of the Lord at the presence of the Lord of the whole Lord in Psalms 97 and 5. I thank you that your presence is still a mountain, mountain presence. God, I thank you. There's nothing impossible with God tonight. Hallelujah. Look one in verse 37. And Lord, that's the condition. That's the key. Nothing's impossible with God. Holy Spirit, help us to come with you tonight, to move with you, Lord God, tonight. Not against you, not opposing you, not offending you, but Holy Spirit moving with you. With God is where impossibilities become possible. And Holy Ghost tonight with also means in agreement with. So we agree with God tonight, Lord God, that when we obey you, Lord, that's what we're telling you. We agree with you. Lord, when we disobey, it's just the opposite. We're telling you we disagree. So Holy Spirit, help us yield to you and obey you tonight. You said in Acts 5 and 32, and we are witnesses of these things, whom God and also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Holy Spirit, you're only given as a gift to those that obey. God, to those that do what you say, Holy Spirit, you will be the reward they receive. And Holy Ghost, tonight it's not just something of and from you that I desire. It's more of you I want. So, Holy Spirit, I know before you give more of yourself to me. You require of me to obey you. You, you bring forth the command. You, you teach me something. You tell me something to do. And then as I yield, though I do not know why, but yet I know it's you that said, when I step out in faith and obey you, Holy Spirit, you become my greatest reward. The promise of your presence becomes mine that I possess. And Holy Spirit, tonight we want to obey you. For God, you warned the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 28 uh, uh, about curses that would come when they disobeyed. Verse 15. And Holy Spirit, in verses 40 of Deuteronomy 28, you told the children of Israel that would be a disobedient to your commandments and your law and your word. You told them you will have olive trees in your land, but you will not anoint yourself with oil because the olive fruit uh, will not yield. It will fail. Holy Spirit, disobedience, Lord God, removes the oil of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, uh, we may have the tree, the olive tree. We may have the form. It may look like it's anointed. The church and everything and the activities uh, may appear on the surface uh, that it has your movement, but Holy Spirit, when we're disobedient, we rob ourselves of the all of the Holy Ghost. We, we rob ourselves of the all of the move of your anointing. So, 
Holy Spirit, tonight, if we're going to receive fresh oil, Lord God, we must go ahead and determine in our hearts there's a command coming and we must obey to receive it. Lord, it don't just haphazardly fall upon us. You don't just anoint anybody. God, you anoint those that obey. Those that receive the Holy Ghost are those that obey. Acts 5 again, verse 32. So, Holy Spirit, we go ahead. Lord God, and determine Make our decision, doing our decision to make this service. Holy Ghost, we're going to obey. Come on, lift your hands and tell him. Holy Ghost, help me to obey you tonight. Help me to obey your move tonight. you got to understand when God speaks a lot of times to the flesh, it makes no sense. That's why God said in his precious word, he meant so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8, verses 8. Hallelujah. And the Bible said in Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe he is, and that he's rewarder of those that digitally seek him. So if faith in God pleases God and flesh does not please God, that meant when God said so then they that are in the flesh, he was saying those that are in doubt and disobedience, those that are in disbelief and disobedience, they can't please me. The flesh, the carnal mind, it makes no sense of the move of God. It appears foolish on the surface. But tonight, we don't want just the sense of the meaning. We want the mind of the Spirit. For God, you said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 16, Hallelujah, we have the mind of Christ. And Holy Ghost, you said in Isaiah 40 and 13, Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him. Holy Spirit, we have not come to teach you.
bless your faith. Amen.